that's how we're going to start it. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, we were talking a little bit earlier about, obviously, like, the, the stuff that you're doing now, like, the, the bigger time stuff, but that stuff that's come after, what, like, 15, 20 years of, of trying to get there, I would say? Yeah, for sure. Not right away. Stay close. Try to speak closer to the mic, so. Yeah. So the people can hear you, bro. That's the point. They're here for you. I'm sorry, my dude. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, so, yeah, so you're, you're a concept artist and director. Which one came first? Or uh, does it come kind of hand in hand because whatever you're creating is pretty much your direction? Yeah, I, it, it, it isn't the same thing. It's very similar, but it's not similar at all at the same time. What I was before anything else was an artist. Uh, so, you know, we knew each other in high school. Mm-hmm. So I would like to draw, you know, I'd like to paint. I'd like to just, you know, have a good time uh, being a kid, you know, doodling around. So that, that, that <coughs> with the, the doodling, the sketching, the drawing, was that always like an innate talent starting from like elementary school where everyone was drawing the Superman sign and the world industries characters, like stuff like that? Were you always just kind of drawn and doodling or, or that you were good at it or not? Uh, definitely not good at it at <laughs> first. <laughs> uh, at first, what it was was... Uh, drawing shit that i would see around the place like around where i lived so my mm. my parents uh we grew up in oklahoma when, when we no moved to the u.s I yeah know that. yeah i know i'm a very interesting person well, when <laughs> did you move out here to oklahoma uh well i went so when my parents got uh they won a visa lottery from bangladesh uh, sick yeah i was one years old and then i we moved to tulsa oklahoma uh because my dad didn't didn't know where to go He's like, so he just know. picked anywhere. Well, he's in the like, US. well, the U.S. is the land of opportunity. So he looked at the map and he was like, dead center of the map, Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> I see the logic. Just if it's in the middle, it's gotta have it's gotta have traffic coming. From I mean, both yeah, ends. it was it was a great childhood. Um, and so there's the a lot of lottery. Yeah, yeah, I'm here because of a lottery. Can we talk about that a little bit? Because I, I just the concept of that is it it's something like every citizen is already automatically enrolled, or no, you have to? No, no, oh my god, dude. So my mom married my dad. And then um, uh, they had my brother. And then after that, they essentially had nothing going for them. You know, they're, they're stuck in, in one Bangladesh. of the poorest. Yeah, we're poor, we're stuck in one of the poorest countries in the world. And so my mom, out of desperation, applied for the visa lottery. Sick. Thought nothing of it, and then got a phone call. Wow. Yeah. So I'm here because of chance. That's awesome. Which is kind of at the spine of everything we'll talk about. Today. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so I moved to Oklahoma, uh, middle of nowhere. Uh, and um, there wasn't a lot of stuff around the town, but there was a library that was w- within walking distance. So we would walk to the library, and there was a section there that had books of you know plants and and sp- and, and airplanes and, and and basically like technical shit. Tickle, like, a typical ri- library books. Yeah, like with big <laughs> pictures that were cool and yeah, colorful, you yeah, know. And yeah. so for me as a kid, I'm like, wow, these are like treasure chests. You know, I just open them up, and then what I would do is I would draw and sketch what I would see in the books. Uh, not to show anybody, but to kind of uh, mimic the books. That was your first instinct. So you you would flip it, and instead of deciding to like kind of go through the the text, you looked at the photos and thought, hey, "Oh, dude, I start. had dyslexia. I couldn't read that oh, no shit, kidding. dude. No, okay. yeah, I had so much trouble reading mm-hmm. as a young child. Actually, many many artists have dyslexia. Uh, I can see how that can play a role into kind of diverting it to. Yeah, I I focus on the pictures more, less than the word, um, but now actually I try to do the opposite, which is actually quite interesting. You try to study the the word, the word and, and, and then the try pictures. to create the photo today, off of it. Because today we suffer from, from visuals, beautiful visuals that mean nothing. Absolutely nothing. The most incredible fucking expensive movie that was a complete waste of my time when a meme is way more... <laughs> Uh, efficient, wor- efficient. Yeah, yeah, it gets the point across yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I could, that movie should movie. have been a meme, just a fucking. Ex- what movie? Oh, just in general. In you're general, saying, right? In general. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, look at it this way. So, we take our time. Uh, I guess, I guess, some people take their time quite seriously, right? So, I would. If you're gonna, if you're gonna utilize that time for entertainment, it better be fucking worth your time. And if you've had a great time laughing at a three second clip, you're not gonna sit around for three hours for some dumbass visual effect feast <laughs> that doesn't mean anything to you. It's kind of, I mean, some movies have if some it's worth importance it. to people. If yeah. it's worth it. I mean, I'm not gonna. How do we get there from talking about you drawing kids <laughs> or when you were a kid in the library? Dyslexia, that's uh, what you're trying to do now. You're reading. Okay, I'm starting to get it. So you started doodling and drawing yeah. from the beginning because that's you were, you were more drawn to with dyslexia. So 
Yeah, more drawn to visual images. Visual images. Um, so yeah, I would draw as a kid, and in, in school, you know, the teachers or the kids would be like, "Hey, like that's really cool. Like you're really good at that." Mm. And 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 then I, you know, the ego would slowly be built, right? Lego by Lego piece. I'd be like, "Yeah, I, I am pretty I'm good, good at, at this. That. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm an artist." You know? <laughs> so, yeah. and that happened. In high I think school. that's important though, especially at the age where you're starting to kind of try something new yes. or put yourself out yes. there and show people like, yes. "Hey, this is my work." Especially at that if age. If there's any age where you should blow up somebody's ego, it's when they're young. Absolutely. When they're young. Because that's when that's when your that's when you're 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 gaining your grounding. You know, you're, you're learning who you are. You're learning what you like, what you don't like. You you know, and if somebody is on the sidelines, you know, rooting you on, so be it, dude. I think emotionally, even at that age, you kind of need that a little bit more. I mean, now someone can tell me like, hey, my you know this this podcast sucks, and I'll be like, I will fucking whatever. But if you were to tell me that when I was a kid, it would like devastate me probably a lot more. So to reinforce someone, especially at that age, that hey, what you're doing is good. I think it can really like change a lot for that person's like. Well, if, are you familiar with a node graph? I'm not. Uh, so you you know you've seen a tree. Yes, so, I've seen a tree. So uh, let's forget the the roots for a second and just look at the base of the tree. Okay. That's the trunk. The trunk then splits into branches. The branches have sub branches. Sub branches have sub branches. Eventually, you have leaves, fruit. So you go from the trunk uh, and onwards into the fruit, right? And so the f if the fruit is your talent, right? Where did it start? Right? What's the trunk? That's what I want. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what so I'm asking. So, like, yes, like, so when you're talking about the childhood, when you're talking about all these concepts of, you know, positive reinforcement, it's just a, it's a notion of pattern recognition. It's like, a, it's like you pick up a skateboard and the first time you, you try, you fall. You're like, fuck, that hurt. But then you see your friends do the same thing and they keep trying, you know, you know and then you got one or two options. One, I'm going to give up. Or two, fuck it, I'm going to keep trying. Yeah. After a while, you're not falling anymore. And after a while, you're fucking skating. And after a while, you try and jump and you're falling even harder. Yeah, you fall a lot harder. And so it, 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 sure. it slowly develops to becoming, you know, now you're Tony Hawk or whatever, right? <laughs> um, but it does take that sort of obsessive nature to keep doing it. Right. Yeah, and and again, having reinforcement from your peers telling you, "Hey, the stuff you're doing yes. is going to help you get a little bit more obsessed because you want to keep yes. putting out good work." Yes, yes, yeah. which is much harder today because most of your peers are online, and most of those guys are telling yeah. you with a single tap or double tap, right, uh, what they think of you. When in the past, somebody would like straight up look at you in your eyes and be like, "Dude, don't give up." Right. That is fundamentally different than somebody typing that. Well, I mean, I think that's the importance of, I mean, having close friends and family. You know, too, because you don't necessarily need everybody to tell you that something's good. I mean, if your work is good, if if no, you, you if you believe yeah. in what you're doing, and I think if you put something out and you think your work is good, you're gonna get the double taps. You're gonna get the stuff that's maybe not as important as someone saying, "Hey, you know, your what you're doing is great," but you sh you're ideally getting that from, you know, Mashoff, for example. You're getting that from your wife. You're getting that from your friends and family. Your friends, your family, your brothers, your sisters. Yeah. It's well. Yeah, you. What well, sounds like you had support. You had you had good no, support and good feedback. I didn't have much support. Did not have support. No, I did but you not. Good <laughs> no. Okay. Just, no, I did not, man. I'm I'm a brown kid. You know, I'm from I'm from Bangladesh, and so I'm supposed to be a doctor and engineer, mm. right? And so no, I did not have support. But that was precisely why I worked harder. Um, you know, I think I think when I was a kid, I saw my mom, and my dad, uh, as humans as well as my as my mom, and my dad. I I almost was desensitized enough to like see my dad, dad as a working man because I would see a separate from the father role. F separate from the father role because okay. when the father role came about, he was home, he wasn't working. But when he was working, he shifted. It was a whole different mm. mentality, right? Of like I've got to go to work, I've got to take care of my family. Um, but I saw how the world, in many ways, trains us to behave in a certain particular way. And also to desire a certain set subset of goals in a particular order, right? So like, oh, I've got to go to college, I've got to get a degree, you know, I got to get this piece of paper that tells me I'm fucking smart. Your degree, you got to go to then get a job. That job needs the degree, right? So all these prerequisites, all the way to marriage, to having a child, to then like I don't know whatever where you what wherever comes you after end that, up. Yeah. It's a script. Proper age for retirement. Yeah, yeah, it's all a script, and and a lot of it is is consistent with how the game works of the world, right? How 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 uh, capital works, how investing works, how um, how 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 money is really grown, you know, over time. And so, if you fast forward or backtrack to how you want to make a decision as an artist or as a father or mm -hmm. as any creative individual you're going to be tainted and somewhat influenced by your environment. And so uh, me as a child, I realized that 
for two particular reasons. So you got my dad becoming the American man, right? Becoming the American man. Becoming the American okay. man, right? To, okay. to assimilate, to I survive. I like the verbiage of that. Yeah. 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 Uh, pursuing the American dream, right? right? right. Um, and, you know, you know, Wolf of Wall Street comments on what that means in many ways. In many ways, this is why m- many people hate that movie and why that's one of my favorite movies of all I time. I like that movie, too. Um, at the same time, you have uh, the religious background that my family mm-hmm. came with as well. So my family from Bangladesh, they're Muslim. Same and with they're, my family they're, from they're Lebanon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, you know, know. <laughs> you know how, how passionate they Absolutely. are about their beliefs, which is okay, right? right? You can believe in whatever you want to believe. Uh, if you're not going to harm anyone, Or believe. force feed anyone. Or whatever the case. No. If you're not going to harm anyone, it's okay. Believe in whatever you want to believe, right? Um, now, it wasn't, that was not the case with me mm-hmm. right it was either believe or or or, or get out right yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> like I'm, i cannot uh there's this word it's called um nastic nastic it means what in my language? language it means a uh, disbeliever english language bangladesh B- uh, Be- uh, bengali. bengali bengali what is it again what's the word uh nastic nastic yeah that's it nasty it means it means <laughs> it means disbeliever and so disbeliever. my mom would call me that even as a kid because she she mm. i would question everything religious so i grew up in a world or men would assimilate either to becoming more American, or men and women would assimilate to becoming more religious. Yeah, more traditional. But it was always one or the other. It wasn't both sometimes, you know? And so it, there was this really, really weird dichotomy of, like, you can't be American and Muslim or something like that, or too American or too, you know, like, there was, like, there's this healthy balance. And I'm like, why are these people pulling me and pushing me in so many different ways? Who the fuck am I? Right. It's, it's not even so much who the fuck are you. I think it's, again, the generational thing of our parents is they were raised way different than us. So we're, we we obviously are innately having that American lifestyle, the the speech, the cognitive thinking. It's, it's way different than traditional religious upbringing, especially in countries outside of the U.S. Yeah. Like yeah. my mom and dad got married when they were super young. Now that doesn't really happen as much. It still does. But as yeah. far as like a religious reason, it, it's not as common. Not as common. So the way that they were raised and to, to have them kind of hold on to the culture and the tradition, which obviously we respect and it's all good. And if you believe in that, more power to you. But to come and see how things are here and how it's not that they're trying to hold us to kind of keep the culture going where we're trying to pretty much let it go because well, we're not really religious it it, it, it could be culture uh, i i think it goes back to patterns i think everything i'm going to talk about today goes back to patterns um our parents saw certain things mm-hmm. they they saw people of certain color of in a certain way that they would even smell and speak and hug right and these 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 sort of patterns of human behavior become life every day you know family they become neighborhood they become familiar Right. And and when you when you move, you know, from Lebanon, from Israel, from from Bangladesh, from China and you come to the U.S., you're meeting unfamiliar. And it's like a clash. It's like two waves hitting each other. Right. And 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 when you're in a realm where everyone used to talk and walk and speak a certain way and smells for a certain type of smell that would remind you of home and you're in somewhere else, yep. your, your, your amygdala is just like firing. Yeah. Right. It's just like, oh, shit. Alert, <laughs> alert, alert. Home. I don't. We're <laughs> home. I don't. I, this is all new for me. <laughs> yeah. That means it's all evil. Right. And there's this fear, there's this fear of the unknown. And it, it exists even in millennials today, and I'm a millennial. It exists even in the young, it's even worse in it's the young It's way worse in the younger it's, generation. It's way a, a, worse. as hipster as you think you fucking are, and as like progressive and woke as you think you are, you're still reading a Google search fucking library of what you should think. Even your Google search is curated based on your fucking metadata. So, so what's the what's the way to combat that, or what's what's the alternative uh, to that? Because watch, that's what they're kind of watch a news from Fox News, and then start telling Facebook, "Hey, you're interested in random shit you're not interested in." Start going to random rabbit holes and opening doors of like fucking random r- random beliefs and random reports and random news networks that you don't agree with mm. and get pissed off and irritated at it and let yourself feel that and it's so easy to so it's not just off. taking the stuff that you want to see that you're searching for but look for stuff that kind of is opposing well, I, what you're I, I do this on purpose because because uh, i know we we know how algorithms work right, right? and right. so i'm trying to constantly teach the algorithm i'm interested in all of the above because i'm not going to not use the internet because right? what I, you search for is going to continue to pop up so if you yeah, start searching yeah, for everything yeah. then you're just going to get a bevy yeah, of yeah yeah i get you know i get like 
Fox News in my right. news feed. Yeah. I don't necessarily always watch it, but it is very interesting to see two heads talking about two di- two different sides of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Right? So you got you know your blues and your, and your red. So just right? be more informed. Try to be fully in- oh, as as informed as you can be with the time you have to kind of search for everything or the capacity you have to even care to fully, like inform yourself. Maybe if you're into it. If you're into it, I'm not. Or into just it. you know sit <laughs> sit and then sip on your on your favorite tea and don't do anything. Just just. Ignorance is bliss. That kind of thing. You know, I some people some, I don't blame them. Yeah. I don't. I that, don't. But that's not your. No, I like I don't blame my parents. That's what my parents are, uh, and, and I love them. But that's what they are, and uh, and that's okay. You know, that's okay. Yeah. And and that's kind of where uh, where my mindset is, even with my own work. You know what I do. You know, as a creative, you're gonna constantly think about how to get attention and how to get people to like you and how to get more followers and you know that that can be a driving force for sure you know i'm sure i'm sure um i'm sure there's a musician that was driven by attention i'm sure there's a, there's a, a lot s- where there, i'm sure there's an athlete that was driven by attention so i'm not saying that it's bad um, but it can be corrosive. It's if it's the main source of, of uh, I guess, nutrients it's for ego. your fucking brain. That's yeah. ego. That's well, all that is. If you if you if you get stroked on, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. That, that's but but ego is important. You know, ego keeps you. Uh, confidence is important. Ego. Confidence dependent. is. Confidence is. But what's the difference between confidence and ego? B- uh, boasting, I think. Ego is mm. feeling that you are maybe above someone that might not be able to do something as good as you, or you're putting yourself ahead of you know people who are essentially at the same level. So if you're confident in what you do, you can be a creative artist or director and have work out alongside other creative artists and directors and feel like your stuff is still adequate. But if your ego is playing you know role, then you think your shit is better than everybody else. Your why is mine not? At Sundance, why is mine not? It's at so subjective, though, right? Because if you, if you, if if I, if you, if I say something, or if I do something, and it's like in the realm of like what I do. So if Seifel says something about art, it's like, mm-hmm. wow, he's so confident about his work or his art, right? But someone else might say, no, he's totally egotistical. Why is he so fucking confident? But what what is it that they would be seeing from you that would be doing that? Because I don't see that from you. There's at no point do I see you putting out your work or talking about the stuff that you do that it turns into like oh his ego is well I I guess I'm not talking about me in general I guess I'm talking about personalities like artists as a whole uh, not just any anyone anyone that 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 has an opinion so (laughs) anyone online if you if you if you have any of you guys online right now anyone that that voices an opinion can either be taken as Mm -hmm. someone enlightened or someone with a big mouth. And that's all about perspective, and that's all opinion. And, and, and somebody that appears to have ego could actually know what the fuck they're talking about. And it's not until they're dead or that it's successful we're like, wow, that person's so great. And here we are, you know, putting Steve Jobs on our bookshelf and saying, I totally, totally buy that guy's way of yeah. fucking doing things. When he's the guy that started Apple and got kicked out of his own company right. and then got brought back to save it, you know. When is ego ego? When is ego actually confidence? And so it's it's a slippery slope. And yeah. what I try to do is I try to make sure that when I'm actually sitting and doing my own work, whether that's whether you're a fucking musician, an athlete, a cook, you know, it's all it's all a form of of expressing uh, your talent. Um, I, when I'm when I'm focused and I'm studying, I'm really asking myself in those moments when I'm learning, am I doing this for me? Or am I doing this for something else, right? And and it's got to be very selfish. I've, I've got to want to do something for me if it's my own work, right? Absolutely. It's very selfish. Absolutely. Uh, it's very much like, is this, like, worth my mm-hmm. fucking time mm-hmm. to myself? Because, mm-hmm. you know, you don't nowadays, you know, everyone's so busy. And so when you do have time to dedicate to your own work and your own practice... It, it has it's, to be worth it. it. It's, it's not just what has to be worth it. it. It has to bring you some form of happiness, too, right? right? So when l- with your skill set specifically, since we were talking, let's say going through, um, going through the library, picking up the books, you kind of got into dueling. You started getting the reinforcement from your peers around you. Did, at some point, did you become like formally trained? Did you decide the educational path was instead of going and getting a piece of paper in microbiology, which was not going to do anything for you? You obviously had to make that decision beforehand of what you know what direction you wanted to take. So when was yeah. it that you saw that creative path of like you know what actually? It's not that I'm good at this. I'm really good at this, and I want to take this to the next yeah. level. Graffiti. Graffiti. 
graffiti. You got involved in graffiti. No, I didn't ever do it. Not like I didn't, and not like on walls. I mean, no. like I did do graffiti, but not with paint. I did it with fucking paper, dude. It's so fucking stupid and, and pointless. Why is it stupid? What do you mean? It was what? hilarious. So, but so like so elaborate. I, for me. So at some point, like I draw all the time. And I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Like I'm not gonna do another drawing for someone else to be like, hey, nice drawing. Like right. I don't right, need. What's the point of that? I'd <laughs> <laughs> rather just hang with yeah. my homies. Yeah. You know, I'd rather just have a good time. Yeah. So, so it started getting to that point where you yeah, were doing like, it, and you're like, I'm, I'm not doing t- this shit like, just so that I'm you tired of it. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna put the instrument down. Whatever. Right. Right. And then uh, I was I was uh, watching some shit online. Oh uh, uh, no, not online on TV. And I saw Banksy, mm. uh, like a graffiti this graffiti mm-hmm. artist. Yeah, I know Banksy. Like every fucking piece of work that guy has done is fucking genius, dude. And it's like the social commentary and like it's just down to a single rat. And you're like, fuck, dude. The placement of that rat is genius, <laughs> you know. And I'm like, I was so impressed by the accuracy of his like his scope like and like what he was shooting at that i'm like fuck it's not about the tools it's about what i'm doing with them and so i started at ghs i actually start i did like i did like this cutout of like an overweight person eating a hamburger in front of a tv and like and like i did this other one of like uh so banksy was the original professional inspo yeah i think i felt i was courageous enough what i pursued being a uh uh, graffiti like that artist style. Should. Right, okay. Not his style. Of course, I would have searched for my own, but uh, I guess you could say his mission or his questions. Mm-hmm. I would have similar questions about our world. You know, he's, if you look at the work that Banksy does, he's always making social commentary of that geological location where he does that art. So the placement of that thing matters. Today, when you when you produce a piece of work, you're like kind of releasing it to the world. It's very interesting when you release it to a very, very niche little market a little town you know so this is for you guys yeah. you know it's 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 much more personal it, it's much more evocative and so i just i i connected to that so i did my own version or tried to do that during high school that's what got me into you know drawing and painting again you know kind of reignited the interest and so i was fucking painting political shit <laughs> that's a fucking high in school high school in high school All right. yeah political shit like i was drawing like george bush with like a false sign because on of banksy because you kind of saw of the yeah yeah because yeah, you know okay. why because he pissed off so right. many fucking people, right right dude. and that kind of just spoke to you in a way of like i'm gonna try to well it's, it's but it was you stepping up to the next level because you stopped i think it's also you stopped drawing shit for other people and you were so intent on like i don't want to do that for anyone i want to do some shit for me and you were influenced by the way that this guy's kind of doing the same thing where he's yeah. saying i'm not doing this for anybody else i'm doing this for me and well so and he was unknown nobody knew it's like daft punk still right like you don't it? yeah so yeah. it's I, there's something about that even like sia for example there's something about that that sia. is so mm. fucking she's known though she is now yeah. she is now but there's something about that where like if you persona there Hidden yeah persona. there's something so mysterious about that that is very romantic to me and of course like i have gorillas yeah, yeah yeah i haven't pursued that obviously myself but uh, maybe it was that that, that lure, you know, mm-hmm, my superhero, mm-hmm. my idol, right? I can't see them, but I can see their work everywhere, right? And so, yeah, as a kid, it totally reignited me. And then where did that lead you to get the professional training? And is it more common in someone in, in your specific skill set to be, <clears throat> like, self-taught versus professional or uh, formally trained? Or would you say it's it's more highly uh, recommended to kind of get some formal training because of programs you have access to, teachers that you have access to, so someone like you who's doing teaching, for example. So it's a different answer depending on the major. So if you're doing filmmaking, it's one answer. Concept art for concept art oh, okay. for filmmaking, it's another answer. For concept art, which is what I have more experience in, yeah. uh, in currently, um, what I did in high school, I just you know had my art classes. But during high school, I uh, my art teacher uh, applied for a scholarship program from from Disney. It's called uh, Ryman Arts, which is an incredible program, um, and it, it, it should keep going on, and I hope it, it never ends. But basically, they would go to the poor neighborhoods, and they would find kids that couldn't afford art supplies. Mm. And they would hand them, like, a $1,000 worth of, like, art like supplies. Like do they vet it. it at all, or do they just find yeah, kids yeah, who are yeah, interested? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Like, so your te- the art teachers kind of, like, submit the students right, right, okay. and, like, their work. So and, they're like, not just giving it to someone that might not no, use no, it. No, no, it's okay. very much a competition. Okay. Um, and, and, and so I got awarded a scholarship to go to USC during GHS, during high school. During high school? Yeah, during Which high year? school. For you, was it? Uh, I think it was junior year. Junior year, yeah. You're what, 08? No, I think it might have been sophomore year. I graduated 08. Oh wait, okay. So a year uh, before. So sophomore year, I believe, uh, I went to USC every weekend, and I took traditional art courses with the art teachers there. And, and these people that's were great, dude. That's experience. Yeah, that's that was experience at that, that age too. That was like, 
that was maturing. The, yeah. That was like, yeah. oh, yeah. level up yeah. because these people are helping me, you know? And also, holy shit, I have every possible tool ever, like paint, pastel, color pencil. You know what I mean? Everybody like, had paint, foo. No, not like <laughs> not oil paint. Oh, <laughs> like no. really expensive paint. I didn't paint, paint. On, like, my, on my desktop. No, dude, like a tube of oil paint could <laughs> yeah, cost like okay. $50. Not, <laughs> not <laughs> not that that kind, I didn't have that kind of paint. Never mind. <laughs> it's incredibly yeah, expensive I'm at the program. to be yeah. an artist, dude. So I've heard. To, uh, so I've well, heard. Uh, well, if you do raw medium, right? Um, so yeah, USC. That, that education led me to realizing, you know what? I really enjoy doing this. At the same time that I was doing that, I was also doing filmmaking. Uh, at GHS, so I there was that uh, computer sort of uh, programming slash Photoshop slash filmmaking mm-hmm, class, mm-hmm. and there was a camera there, and so I was filming shorts, and I was I remember that. I them. remember you filming the shit. Yeah, I loved that around shit, high dude. school. I was wa- dude. I just like for me wow. at the end of the I was day, like thirteen years I was ago, just doing whatever the fuck I want to do. Yeah, just being a kid, you know. <laughs> so I was filming shit, editing in Sony Vegas, fucking splicing the sound, matching it all up, doing you know doing cuts, doing shit scores. that other people your age in high school were not doing. No, but the only the reason well. it was even possible was because I torrented everything. Everything was illegal. Every piece of software was illegal. Was. Not well, anymore. Now everything <laughs> is legit now. Okay? Now it has to be. Because <laughs> it I has be now, legit. Now because I, because I would get sued. And <laughs> yeah. I don't, and I don't want to be sued. Please <laughs> no, don't, don't sue we me. We don't want that. Please, everything is legit now. Please I don't promise. sue me. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> no, you don't. Just don't. <laughs> put the fuck off. But look at that, Jade. It takes breaking the fucking law for someone like me to just get ahead. To have access to get ahead. Yeah, dude. Getting ahead is on you as much, like, to put yeah, the work yeah, in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Having yeah. the access to yeah. that kind of stuff, if yeah, it's, it has it, to be done. It's not fucking handed to you, dude. Right, right. And, and I'm not going to forget the countless nights that me and my cousin were, like, learning uh, Sony Vegas. And we, he had torrented that. And we were using a computer that was our neighbor's that he threw away. And then mm-hmm. he was just like, mm-hmm. you know, you just need to get this little graphics card. You plug that in. What did you guys torrent through? Uh, Napster? I, I forgot. There's so many yeah. torrent LimeWire? sites. Oh yeah, yeah music. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. But that was strictly music, right? You can't do programs. Limeware and stuff? was music. I think it was uTorrent. uTorrent was like anything, so long as you had the the key. So yeah, I, would, I learned how to crack. Wow, uTorrent's been long, around since high school. I started using it like maybe like five six years ago, but oh, I think yeah. it's been around since like for twenty years almost. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. wild. Yeah. So so the, I got I uh, during high school. So in the in the, during the weekdays, I, w- I would go home. I'd fucking finish all the homework assignments. Just get them out of the way. Right. So you were getting it out of the way because that was. I was not just where doing work to get it out to of get the it way out and to get, get the, class the mo- get mom and dad happy with the A's because right. I just don't want to deal with that shit. Right. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> so you're just doing shit just to get mom and happy dad with the A's with the A's? like so it's but not it's, it's a, you're we, doing work and to get A's like you gotta try to get A's. I didn't get straight A's. I would, I would look at a class and be like, this class is not important. <laughs> and I wouldn't spend as much time in the class. And I will say, you know what? This class, I, I, I should have thought shit through like you did in high school. I was just kind of sitting there like, fuck, I got to fucking do homework. And no, then, like, dude. Yeah, I'm like, well, I'm not doing, I'm not going to that college. I'm not getting that degree. And I'm yeah. not, pers- I, I was not going to do that. Everyone had Very this. Very analytical narr- for e- high school. Everyone had this like fucking sp- Very, like, yeah. story written out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to go to USC and then I'm going to graduate. And then right. I'm going to be a doctor. And then I'm going to be rich. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to have family and I'm gonna have kids. And they're going to be awesome. We're not going to be happy. Yeah. And then I'm going to die. And then it's just like, slow. Slow the fuck down and like start here first. Breathe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, yeah, dude, I, I was like teaching myself other shit. I wasn't learning at USC because at USC it was all about fine art, which was amazing. You know, using your hands. I'm like, but like fucking digital art too. So I was learning that mm. on my own and I was YouTubing shit and, and fucking watching tutorials and like just teaching myself shit. So I taught myself Photoshop, Sony Vegas, Adobe Premiere. Uh, uh, blah 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 blah. Transcoding video into digital. How to do? How to fix the fucking interlacing in the video feed? God damn it! So, so did you have shit. to? Did you have to kind of? Obviously, you had to as, uh, as you were learning the the technology, the programs, the equipment. You were creating work. You were creating. Essentially, did you know you were creating a resume that you didn't necessarily <laughs> know you were doing? No, dude, I was just doing this. That's shit crazy, I was right? Fucking board <laughs> and that ended up turning into your work that well, you showed to so i started making money during high school doing it because so I'd like, for other people yeah i would like mm-hmm. shoot these random videos for other people i s- then realized that these people were on myspace so then i learned how to code on myspace, MySpace. and right. i started doing div layouts so i'd re- delete the entire layout on myspace and make a band space so yeah, i'd fucking yeah. re- replace it so i'd i started making some people were, dude, were paying for that in MySpace. Dude, I, was get, I was making cash my g yeah <laughs> i was making some decent money in high school shit. i mean I what what <laughs> <laughs> I, I what I learned was if I focus and if I concentrate, uh, 
I can I can I can make something special, right. and that special thing gives me joy and gives someone else joy, and it can buy me shit because I get money for it. And so I, that that sort of loop yeah. was developed, you yeah. know, and it was addictive. You know, it's just like, well, I yeah, I, I'm fucking poor. I I, I want to like do stuff. I want to go to movies. And you're doing it yourself. Yeah, you're not. It's I'll, not a handout. No, I I yeah. like I want to see a movie. I haven't been able to afford movies. What right. do I do? What would I usually do? I'd fucking pay for one movie, and then I and then I after the movie, I'd get out and buy a thing of popcorn, and then I pretend to walk around a little bit go to the bathroom then go to the next movie yep. and then up again classic next movie and then after about nine movies I'd walk out <laughs> bloodshot red eyes like dude I'm fucking nine movies I would have two maybe a double header and call it dude, dude yeah. I'd fucking sleep through <laughs> yeah. like a blow I'd, w- I'd sleep through a rom-com because like, I'm like this is pointless to obviously watch, yeah, right? Right. yeah I would oh. try to make a living right so yeah torrenting <laughs> breaking the law Creating teaching myself shit Creating, I guess, digital what you work. call a digital work yeah. resume. So what was your introduction into the, you know, working with the real players in the industry? Because going from, you know, sell, um, creating your resume, learning these programs, however you had to do it, going to USC programs, and then now you have to kind of submit something to someone. Who right, was the first right, big right. player where you're like, okay, shit, I need to submit them something so I can be taken seriously as a creative director or a creative artist? Are we talking post-college or during college? Post-college. Pro- post-college. Post-college, okay. yeah. So post-college... Like as a professional, fully freelance. Now you're committed to. This so I, I actually started freelancing during college. Okay, let's say. In uh, co- so let's say in so college. so during college, uh, college was fucking expensive. So I went to Art Center College of Design. It cost me three hundred and fifty dollars a day to go there. What? Uh, about an Xbox and a video game. Yeah. Per day. I calculated that. Yeah. Two year program. F- was there for about four and a half years. Four and a half years. Yeah. Quarter so system. Uh, trimesters, trimesters, trimester, three times a year. Okay. Yeah, a very expensive school, uh, extremely expensive, and I had never seen money in my life. And so I, I'd, I'd worked for money. I'd saved up a good chunk of money. So the first semester I paid for, but that was twenty five thousand dollars in cash from a pro, poor brown kid. Yeah. it felt really weird seeing that money disappear. Yeah, I can imagine. It, it felt like I gutted myself. And so I, I, you did I, get yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so I worked hard. I got a scholarship. I got a half oh, ride. Got it. But even with the half ride, it still cost still me, you know, yeah. let's say two yeah. fifty a day. Yeah. And so I started working during school to supplement the tuition mm-hmm. and, and also to gain the resume. And so my first job during college was at this little gaming company called Spark Unlimited. And uh, they were working on this game called Uncharted. Or not not Uncharted. Um, Uncharted. Lost, yeah. Lost Planet. Lost Planet mm-hmm. 3. And there I was introduced to people that were like me, but they were like five years ahead of me. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, shit. Like. I'm gonna it talk to you. Thing. I'm gonna yeah. have lunch with you, man. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna ask you about how you navigate your life, and that's kind of how I began to learn how to kind of get into the industry. It's then asking those people, you know, like, well, what did you do, right? But that's what it is. It's about it's about bumping shoulders with the right person that's willing to fucking give you the time of day, dude. It it's not that hard to make it in, in the industry. The industry doesn't want you. The mm-hmm. industry has. They want your skill set. They want your skill set. And if your skill set is desirable, you're going to get a job. If it's not desirable, you're not going to get a job. This is capitalism, right? If you're an ice cream store, if there are two ice cream stores on the same street, the one that has better pricing isn't the one that necessarily wins. It's the one that has the better flavors, the better ice cream. Better brand. And then what happens by nature, they charge more because more people want Mm -hmm. it. Whatever Mm -hmm. the case, Mm -hmm. revenue goes up. Other ice cream stores shuts down. So the industry is wide open. You can walk right in, but the thing is, they don't want you to walk right in. They want you to earn, earn it, it, right? Because Which is every, fair. everyone that Which gets in fair. there works their ass off. Yeah, it right? sh- I don't think it should be an industry where they're letting people come in willy nilly because it's it's work that n- if needs to be done. I mean, nobody, right, no, there's no taste. gatekeeper, right? There's no <laughs> gatekeeper. I mean, if, <laughs> we're, if we're talking about the film industry, there is a gatekeeper. Right? There's something called a film union. So, for example, I'm part of uh, uh, Local 880G. That stands for Art Directors Guild, and that guild is for us, th- that being the creatives in the film industry, and they're also a union that gives us health insurance, they take care of us, but you cannot work in the film industry unless you're in the guild. And just to give you an idea, admission into the guild, $7,000. Per year? No, just, oh, just entry. welcome. Okay. <laughs> Seven grand. Just no like, finance. shit, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. No, it is, it's oh, thankfully okay. broken okay. up. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're there to protect you and all that. But that that that's the door, that's the gate. So if you want to be a concept artist in the film industry, you've got to get into the union. And the only way into that clubhouse of special people, there's nothing about us that's special other than that we're in the union, right? The only way to get in is to appeal to a project that wants you so bad they'll pay either your entrance fee. Oh, 
or they'll fucking pay uh, uh, some sort of some sort of due. Like they'll say, you know, we'll uh, we'll take an intern in and we'll train them if you let this designer or this artist in. And let them into that's the cool. club. And so they're willing to work. They're, they're, they're willing I mean, that's to how I got in. Yeah, like I, I had wor- I've worked on many movies. I had worked on uh, several dozen uh, uh, by graduation, but I still wasn't in the union. Hmm. I, I never actually. So they were, you weren't you weren't as desirable yet because no, you no it's were not that. No, 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 no. It's not about desire. It's about human nature. It's about how people can use you. It's about how you have talent and you're young and you're naive. So they didn't found they didn't find a way to use you yet. Is what you're saying? Like. Before you were in the guild, they hadn't seen a reason to kind of get you in there. So if you work a certain amount of hours, you will pop up as somebody that uh, registers has worked a certain amount of hours. You need to be in the guild to be on a union show. Mm. So there's those laws, right? So they would fire you before those hours. So those hours have to be around three months. So, you know, I would get I would get fired, you know. Right on the cusp. It was perfect timing. And every time I was just like, of course, you know. Oh, you mean on a project. If you're yeah. working on a project for yeah. X amount of time, yeah. you have to be unionized for yeah. certain rights yeah. and shit. But you yeah. would get. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so no, you just had to you just had to luckily, hopefully find someone decent you're, enough you're, to kind of not this fuck is, you over. This is the film industry. <laughs> this is the film industry. And many people are not going to be happy that I'm saying that. But that's the film industry. It is. It is a, 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 a collective of very talented people that deserve where they're at. However, entrance is very hard, and it, there's a lot of politics involved. There's a lot of politics. And if it wasn't for uh, Avatar, I wouldn't be in the film union at all. But it was because of that project that I got in. The but original Avatar. Uh, was, not Avatar 1, Avatar 2. There's, you started working on the sequels. Yes, right, the sequels, okay. yeah. And for the sequels, they had, to, they had to do some sort of a deal. I wasn't part of that, and, and God bless them. They, I don't know what they had to do to get me in. But that just shows you, you know. What was it specifically with? Well, actually, no. We'll we'll, we'll get to the we'll get to that. I think at some point, but we we'll keep going because I, I think we'll, we'll kind of end with that. The Avatar sequels. The the any aspiring artist that just wants to work in the film industry or make commercial money doing anything in the film industry, you've just got to get in, and the only way in is to get a director, a production designer, a producer, somebody that's like uh, a head of like they're one of the top people on the project to be like i fucking need jade all right the way jade does this the way jade does that i fucking need this guy like i don't give a shit put him in the union that's how Mm. it works Mm. and i think there's a there's there's a rule like every film can get in you know a one artist one one person yeah i mean like that's how you get variety right and so like you, 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 you might look at uh, Hollywood today and, 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 and wonder why there's not enough diversity. That's how a lot of it has to do with these, these, these doors that I'm talking about. You know, you know we're all celebrating uh, um, 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 films like Black Panther uh, that, that have a diverse cast and have, uh, uh, you know, an African-American director and a production designer. But we just need more, more talented people to enter the market. And I think that's going to happen not because of the film industry, and I think that's going to happen due to the internet and, mm-hmm. uh, and platforms like Netflix and Apple TV. They are these much smaller entities are investing in good ideas. They don't care where they're coming from, and they don't care what club you're in. They're just curious and hungry for content. But you would still, wouldn't you still have to be unionized to work on? It doesn't yes, matter it, the once project. It union, like it once it goes union, once it goes yeah, it doesn't matter. But the then project. you get, but then you get uh, a particular director that may right. not have a lot of experience. But then you're his guy. Yeah, you can swing. He's going to bring you with yeah, him, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that makes and, sense. And, and that's how it works for a lot of people. They they get in because they they move up the ladder with someone else. So I want to go through the timeline of works before we actually get to the Avatar sequel. So I know, let's say you did. As far as what I'm familiar with, in 2015, one that I actually had a question about is you worked on a music video, which is kind of in, it's, it's interesting for me. So it's I'm getting up with Amber Ojeda, and that video incorporated concept art, but I saw stills of you guys like filming stuff in the woods. So how is it that they get you involved, or do they come to you with a vision of like, hey, for this music video, we want also like concept art to kind of mix in with the the video itself, or? I'll give you the generic answer. So whether this is a music video, a short form mm. uh, piece of film, or a commercial. Can be taken as any. Let's just call it a short video. Sure. Right? Um, usually they come to you with uh, a desire for some sort of a pitch. They want you to pitch to them uh, what you want to do. Oh, and so imagine okay. like if you um, if someone asks you to furnish their room. And you're like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll show you like a Pinterest board of what I would do, mm. you know? And so a lot of the times, uh, directors, what they normally do is that they hire 
artists to help them draw what's in their imagination, which is great. Uh, but it's also uh, a, a challenge because you have to communicate to other artists and then they have to draw what's in your head. So it's like you're trying to draw through another person. Uh, it's like trying to tell somebody, you know, write, how to write something on a chalkboard through a microphone, but you're like <laughs> echoing. Right? Yeah. And so there's a lot of shit lost in translation. A lot of white noise. A lot of white noise. Yeah. And a lot of those uh, pitch decks, um, they're fantastic. You know, they're, they're, they're some of the most creative people you'll ever meet. And they're just coming in as PDFs in an email pitching the music video idea. For me, because I draw and because I paint, um, I don't really want someone else to do that in a pitch. If I'm on a production, I'll have artists and I'll hire artists to work with me. But for a pitch, it's so personal. It's so literally coming out of my head that I'll just draw it. And, I'll, and, and it's not really about uh, it's not really about leveraging my skill set mm -hmm. of drawing and painting. It's just a part of my creative process that I just need to express it. I'm not going to show you a Pinterest board. I'm going to show you the shot. The actual. It, I'm so going to show you yeah. the design. Every the show Pinterest board in the b in the room. In the room. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to show you the. Uh, in fact, we'll walk through the room in VR. Uh, before we even order any of the furniture, which is a lot of what I'm doing today. And uh, it, VR this has work? like concept work for VR stuff, not necessarily concept work for VR. It's, it's immersed filmmaking and, and ideation. And this, this translates to everything from industrial design to, to, to filmmaking. It's, it's how to create and, and draw and think in a, in a three dimensional way with a three dimensional interface. A lot of films today are shot highly technically, you know, they're shot with a virtual camera films like avatar. And in a realm where you're filming with a with a monitor, an iPad that looks into a world that doesn't exist, uh, it's a it's a good idea to try try to have have spatial understanding of what volumes and spaces are like. This is fundamentally different than drawing a person or a leaf or a bug. And in VR and through other technologies that are available today, I can explore anything from any scale. So I've done architecture, I've done engineering projects with Google, I've done. It's just a plethora of stuff that is a byproduct of the experimentation with the technology. You know, it's like yeah. it's like I'm a musician and I'm riffing on an electric right, keyboard. Right, 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 and right, nobody right. ever thought about, you know, putting a drum set on a keyboard and it's not really that revolutionary of an idea. You know? So that I mean that's the essence essentially of what your your title is is the co it's a concept or is it's a concept director. So it's it's you kind of helping them get their image across of, and they don't, might not even know what that is. They might not even know what that right. is. So most, most of the time what I do is I'm sitting with a director or a production designer or I'm looking at the script. We're having a conversation like this and I'm jotting down right. notes like this right. and the next thing you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what it is. Putting it, it is. together, yeah. yeah. And with Google, you worked with them for the Lunar X Prize, which is a lunar lander, yeah. which is a long, you, so you worked with alongside aerospace engineers, so not just other concept artists. Yeah, I was the only artist there. They didn't bring me on as a concept artist. They brought me on as a as a as a designer. Just yeah, they, like designer. we need yeah, we that. need someone to help us figure out the visual direction of what we're trying to do because the engineers. Um, <laughs> I don't think it'll catch it, but fuck it. <laughs> the aerospace engineers are focused on everything that matters. You know, safety, right, security, right. aerodynamics, the logistics. Uh, if some, someone gonna die, right, yeah. they're not focused on. Oh man, I think that could look a little sexier. Like, so yeah. <laughs> I'm there, and these aerospace guys are like, fucking. <laughs> you know, they know everything they know, and then uh, and then I'm like, dude, but it looks like shit. Mm, I'm mm. Like, I'm sorry, it looks like shit. And it's and and that was an experimental point where. Um, Google was trying to inspire uh, people to travel into space. This was before like you know, SpaceX started to blow up again, which was great. This was what, like 2016? End of 2016? Uh, early no, 2016? I can't even recall. The, the, the agenda was very interesting. Yeah. It was under the XPRIZE program, which was going to award any company in the world like $4 million or $4 billion if they landed their lunar lander on the moon, which is like, why would you need to do that? Why do you need to go there? But it's because all of these companies would $4 have to... $4 billion. That's well, why, that's well, why well, you're going to... A lot of these companies could afford it. Uh, yeah. uh, it's not even for the money. It's for, A, the bragging rights, and, two, all of these companies would have to ship something into space, so it tempor temporarily bring down the price of jet, jet fuel jet and, fuel. and yeah. prices, and that was a particular vector that they were trying to get to to release certain technology. Mm -hmm. So there was an agenda, right? Like anything. Always an anything. Agenda. Yeah, always so an I was just there to make things look, look more appealing, more sexy, and inspirational to the public. Like that, It was very psychological. It's Pro like not propaganda, but you had you had to make it look it's like it, no, it, it, like it, it, it is. It's it like is. a lo I, I, you hate to use that word because of the connotations, but it like yeah. kind of is them 
you they want you to pretty it up so that it can kind of sell the idea of itself. Well, I mean, look at look at the way Elon Musk uh, uh, functions with SpaceX, right? Yeah. There there is a sex appeal to everything it does. Look at the the, the sexy spacesuit. Look at the ship itself, right? The logo. Yeah, look at the logo. Nice. And so, yeah. I respect that though because if you look back at our past and uh, and and and, and uh, space flight, you know, look at these like first suits that were like all fucking chrome and shit. Like, what happened to that man? Bring the Those disco ball sick. back. Yeah, Apollo yeah. thirteen. Yeah, yeah where they you at? look back at like <laughs> old space tech. You're like, dude, yeah. this is shit is so. How did they survive around. is what I want to know. And then you look at like what they try to do today and it looks like fucking shit. Yeah. And then Elon Musk comes in and is like, nah, man. I'm going to pretty this thing I'm up. Gonna fucking yeah. make this I'm going to Kanye so. this up. He's going to design the aerospace. And yeah. why not? Because you know what? Some little kid's going to see that and be like, yeah, I want to do that shit. Yeah. And next yep. thing you know, he is or she is, right? And that's what's needed in our world. It's to inspire the little kids because the world's fucked up. We we don't give a shit. Everyone's fucking partying. Nobody gives a shit about what's going on. Right. Everyone's not self-centered. They're fucking engrossed with maintaining their rat race wheel to go keep going fast and right. fast and fast. Right. And then when Corona hit, people like me got swept off my feet. And for a moment, I had the fucking privilege to panic and sit and think about it. Where some people, when they panic, they must get to the next job. They mm-hmm. must do mm-hmm. something else. Mm-hmm. And that's the lifestyle that my parents had led. And that's the lifestyle that I will never want to lead. But it's well, you won't at this point. You won't at this point. It, it's, it, it's, it's it's still possible. Anything can happen. Yeah, but you. I feel like there, there's no avenue other than being true to yourself. You you can't put yourself in a scenario after, especially all the hard work you've done. Everything like the way you think is the way you live, and I don't think mm-hmm. that's very common in a lot of people because like you're saying there's the rat race there's people that get themselves kind of engulfed in the same circle but, it's not, the, but same it's, the thing shit, is it's not their fault sometimes is it no of course not but i mean it it's it's how a person handles it that's kind of the, the judge of it's, the character it's it's a, it's a great you it's a great way to uh to to utilize the machine of the human condition right, right? how to get people to basically do what you need for the economy to fucking run and you need to incentivize them with with money and then they need to have rent that's too high to get them to keep working and here we are la (laughs) here we fucking are la here we are (laughs) and you know as progressive as you fucking (laughs) think you are drinking your your vegan you know smoothie uh that homeless man is not having any idea what's going on in the world and he's wondering why everyone is wearing masks so i don't know man there's a i'm i'm pretty fucked up you know like I are we I, all man? Fuck. You Preaching know, like I, I work, I work my ass off. Sure. Yeah. Some would call me successful. Sure. I, I look around me. I don't feel like we're successful as a as a state. I mean, I don't get me wrong. Like, uh, uh, especially with everything going on, that's that's oof, we can go on forever talk about this. I, shit, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I guess I'm never gonna say like, oh, we're not a perfect nation. That takes time. Right. But like, we're not a perfect neighborhood. You know what I mean? Like, I think this I think isn't we should a perfect apartment. I can't I, even I think use the gym. I, I mean, the if anything, we should be hypercritical, not about the 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 fucking entire nation. Be hypercritical about your fucking neighbors, about your fucking town. Try to like read your local news. Not what's even going that, dude. Wrong Start there. with the people around you. Be hypercritical about your friends and, and like the people you choose to get yourself involved with, the path you choose to take, and who you're gonna kind of work with to get yourself somewhere that's gonna help you out. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't maybe. know. Fuck do I know, right? <laughs> well, um, all right. So we're, we're, you did the Google Lunar X Prize. And, and to my thing, I think it was around the end of 2016. And then beginning of 2017 came. And that's your in- initial involvement in the Avatar sequels. Like, did they, did they, was it because of your work with Google, with uh, the music video you worked with, 20th Century Fox, Disney, Lionsgate, Riot, Riot Games, uh, Chance the Rapper, which is a whole other thing, too. That was during Avatar. That was during Avatar. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So Avatar saw your work, and, and just, like, how did, how did that uh, introduction even... So at the time, I had already finished on Google, and I was working in a small studio called Section Studios in downtown LA. Every day, I would have lunch near Hobo Alley. Like That's mm-hmm. where like the side of me comes from, where I would have to walk through society to then go have something luxurious and eat that to come back to the fucking rat race yeah anyways um during my time there i was doing vr development for video games so i jumped into the video game realm not because i like games or because i want to do games but because i believe it's the future of filmmaking uh and my heart's actually in filmmaking Everything I do is visual, but it's always communicating an idea or an emotion. And moving picture is just a moving piece of concept art to me. Um, so it's section with VR technology and with Annapurna Interactive, which is a, uh, a film company. Annapurna did like Her and I believe Sicario. Great movie. Yeah. yeah. Great they movies. Do th- every Probably. single movie they do is like a risk and it's fucking worth watching. And it's fucking always awesome. And so they came into the video game realm for the same reason. 
And uh, my theory at the time was that um, film from the beginning has always been moving picture, right? So first you had, you know, black and white, you know, Mickey really, Mouse. Yeah, like really, really, really yeah. rough images, but they were still moving. And then eventually there was sound, you know, music, and then audio or voiceover, right? So there was always this experience of having uh, uh, a light being shot at a wall right in our projection right or, or or in a monitor crt sort of screen or whatever and you're just observing these like images that are being flashed in front of you but the way i perceived it always was like a rorschach so if you see a psychologist and they hold a fucking rorschach up to you and they're like oh you know what do you, what do you see? see you know it looks like a fucking ink butterfly but you, you know someone might look at it and say you know i see my it's a clown holding balloons yeah or yeah. i see i see my father you know beating my mother right and so your brain just consumes it and and you, you and digest it in a certain way so a film is 24 rorschachs second so that's what i see and so that's a fucking opportunity for someone to look into themselves goes right back to banksy because with one fucking frame he got yeah, you yeah. so in a film you know if you think about storytelling from the beginning uh even graffiti graffiti storytelling too and so I if you look at film it started out as a man telling a story in front of like a like a fucking fire right like a like a, the story of the hunt right, right? right like oh i got the bison mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. and then they would paint it on the walls and you get hieroglyphics the and original get, storytelling yeah and then that. you get the books that i used to draw as a kid right it was always a human being trying to project a story right whether that was in front of a fire it evolved to shooting through the fire that being through a fucking light, light bulb as a projector right. that that then shot through uh chemicals onto a fucking cathode ray tube into an old school tv and now because of VR, it shoots directly into your eyes. And I believe the future of filmmaking is going to be a form of new perspective of stories that we could not tell based on the limitations of a screen. A two-dimensional plane, you can see things moving. Sometimes it's 3D, so there's a background, so, you know, a fucking finger comes out, like, whoa. Yeah, right? yeah. But, like, all right, you know. So you think it's going to delve into more of the realm of 4D, of where you're actually, you're feeling stuff. There's, there's, it's a sensory. I think it's going to be more like living other people's memories, man. How do we get here from Avatar? Mm. How'd they find you? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Uh, so I was doing all that, all that experimentation. So I had some work during my college year, my senior thesis project. I wrote a script, a two-hour-long film called After, which I need to see. So uh, you're gonna send that to me? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, that's a secret. Damn, man. Uh, and I had illustrated all the art of that, and then that art got seen by the team, and they, for some reason, was just like, "Hey, uh, we'd love uh, to interview you." Um, and that was a random email that I just had received, and I'm like, holy shit! Uh, yeah. 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 So were you say no to that? No. Uh, yeah. And did at any point they tell you what the project is that they were asking for? Because I, uh, I feel like they can't really disclose anything until they decide. They to didn't. No, go with you, but right? it, but it said Lightstorm Entertainment in the in the email. Uh, Right. From, from Lightstorm Entertainment, and I and I looked it up, and I instantly knew, uh, you know, Hollywood Reporter. Yep. I'm like, you know, I did my research, yeah, like who the fuck's emailing me, and I, and I, you know, was just like, holy shit. And yeah, so they emailed me, and I had done an interview, and um, they didn't tell me. I did the interview in the cafeteria. I didn't even get to see anything. Like the were the they trying to gauge you as a, as a character and a personality? Did uh, yes, they ask yes, you to bring yes. your work? Did they, they had they had a very strict policy that they were looking for good people good hard-working people that didn't have uh boastful egos mm -hmm. uh and this is something i took away from that team and something that i will continue to fucking live by um you need it it's like having a garage band and you're trying to jam you, you're trying to at the end of the day make a fucking sick album some drummer is gonna fucking randomly start playing a beat it's like you know i've been thinking about this fucking beat dude and you know i keep dreaming about it like kind of sounds like this you know and then they start going off and then the guitarist might start riffing off that you're jamming it's, you're jamming and you're fucking experimenting right but you're not judging each other because most of the time sounds like shit right now until you fine tune it sometimes it clicks and then the other thing clicks and like a fucking game of tetris you gain this fucking massive song next thing you know you're a fucking queen right right and so Avatar and the individuals that work there have that mindset that we're looking for the people that we want to jam with. We want a very particular type of team that's very hardworking, but also very humble. And and um, I was when they when we, when you know when I met them, uh, that's kind of the sense that I got from them. Um, and it was refreshing, man. 
Like, I don't think I've had a conversation like that since that interview. And what's funny is that you, you were saying they were the ones that ultimately got you in the union. So yeah. they were the ones that yeah, cared. They had, you a, can heart. Tell the, they had yeah, a heart. Yeah, they had a heart. And you can tell. I mean, I think when you get to that level two, everything you've worked with before and directors you've worked with before maybe don't have that level of avatar that avatar had in them. And they, okay, so you, you get through the interview. They're, they're people that you actually start to kind of trust, in essence, as far as like the core of what they're trying to do, their mission statement, how they felt about you. And did they have you coming in to kind of help design or concept like the other worlds, the underwater worlds, the, you know, what, what can you disclose, I guess I should say, um, as far as like the actual direction of what they were using? Because it sounds like it's a culmination of everything you've been doing from when you were a kid picking up your first doodle to now getting an email from the fucking Avatar sequels, which is massive. The f- when I walked in, um, they didn't have a particular set of tasks that they needed me. Like, oh, we hired you to only do this. Mm. It was very much like an open arms. Like, all right, here's our here's all the instruments. You know, now here's what we use. You know, it's very similar to the scholarship program at USC right. <laughs> when I got handed all that art. You know, it's just like, you know, here it is. Everything you could possibly fucking want, basically. Um, Legally. Legally, too. now, <laughs> yeah. Well, and actually, you know, without getting technical, through the film union, a lot of that is your own because you actually do purchase your own equipment and mm. charge for it. Uh, but they, long story short, you can have you can have anything you could possibly want, and uh, that is both an exciting feeling and absolutely terrifying because now imagine. there's no excuse. I can imagine because now you can't be like, oh, I wish I just had right. that. I wish I just had that one like fucking guitar because right. it's that guitar that makes no, you. Now you have it. Now, now it's like do something the with fucking it. play yeah, it. Do something like, with why it. is yeah, it sound exactly. good? Like, <laughs> like I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. stop fucking talking to so me. So this like was that. a true test. This was a true this test. This was the first time that you kind of not not really got challenged, but this was the first time that you were like checked at the door. This was the first time that I was in a room full of like-minded individuals or very similar to me, um, and and not only was I intimidated by how how talented they were i was inspired by how talented they were yeah absolutely you know so it's a good mix dude and i if i don't have that feeling i don't stay at those companies i've left jobs i've, I've taken jobs and i'm like i just just doesn't, doesn't feel right yeah, there's no click. heart behind it there's no heart behind it i'm out and 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 those jobs i i i don't regret because they help me learn what i don't like you know it's kind of like i guess relationships in a way too right like people teach you about yourself and and like, if you don't experience different things, then how do you know uh, what you like? You know, except other than somebody on Yelp saying that everything with a five star is great. Sure. Right. Sure. Yeah. So what can we what can we expect from you coming up? I know you're doing um, an on- online mentorship that's starting October. When? Yeah. Uh, so currently uh, through Brainstorm School uh, in Burbank. Well, now they're online, so they're worldwide. Um, I offer uh, mentorships, which uh, which I didn't know that I was actually going to do. It teaching was never really uh, part of the hemisphere of of, of uh, goals that right. I had, but it was something that I dabbled into while I was at Avatar uh, because one of my really good friends, John Park, owned the school. So he was just like, "Hey, man, you know, I really, really, really like your work, and you know, we're really good friends. I, was, I think you'd be a really great teacher. Would you like trying it out?" And so I, I with the mentorships, I I spend um, like an hour per student just diving into like their struggles dude it's actually sometimes the favorite part of my week man because it's it's th- these are people because you were them at some point yes yeah. and they're from all over the world dude right. i have a girl from uh i have a girl from uh tel aviv i have a girl uh, there's another girl who's from turkey um i have a guy from korea another guy from china another girl from pasadena and it's just Sounds like and every time I, I like when covid hit their first 20 minutes was like, so how's your country doing? Right, right. It's fucking weird, dude. Right. And you know what? We all have the same stories. We all have the same exact complaints, the same fears, the same things that are holding us back. And so the mentorships became about how to get people to not give up on themselves and how to, how to empower uh, self, right? How to empower yourself. Not fucking yelling at yourself in the mirror and puffing your chest, but how to like admit to yourself, like, yeah, you d- you, you do suck. Like, yeah. yeah, you yeah, need yeah, to yeah. get better. But you can. You got time, you know? And so it, it really became almost like a personal training program for the creative mind r- more rather than an art an program. An art program, yeah, or a school. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and you know, I'm, I'm watching these students excel, and it's becoming rewarding. It's like having an impact on someone far away. 
It's, it is. That's exactly what it is. I mean, yeah. That's yeah, quite literally what it and, is. And the, the main reason I'm never going to stop doing this shit and the reason I love it is because these, these kids are from other countries that don't get this mm. level of education. Right. And I would rather be teaching them this shit because their countries could, could benefit from having somebody like them because their countries could need more voices. Because they're going to And I'm not targeting any country yeah, in particular. Yeah, yeah, the U.S. Yeah. needs more voices. And right. so the world just needs more creative people not to give a fuck what people think. Then you begin to realize in the margins we're all the same. Right, I like that, man. Yeah, I, I love that. But it uh, takes cur- it takes courage, right? It takes yeah. courage. I, I had this one girl uh, who was from uh, Taiwan, and uh, she she identified as a male, and it, it's like I'm I'm helping an artist, you know, communicate an art, but at the same time she's talking about figuring that out as well. Uh, that, and I was like, you know what? Let's incorporate that. Into You're your a support work. system, essentially. Well, th- I almost feel like the art form itself is therapy. It of helps course, you, have, you know, have a conversation with yourself. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I, in that process, towards the end of the class, you know, um, they thanked me for just like giving them the courage to like fucking pursue themselves. And the work obviously got better. It had nothing to do with the art, dude. And it's like there's this concept of like, man, I just got to do one good thing. Just one fucking kick at one thing, one fucking thing. Yeah. And I'll get a fucking break and then I could fucking breathe. Right. And I'm telling you. That's going to lead to the fucking end. And yeah, it will be one thing, but you're going to be chasing it so right, fucking hard. You're always going to be chasing it. You're going to grind yourself to the fucking bone. Yeah. And next thing you know, you're in a car crash and now you can't anymore. Where I would say to put your mind at ease is do not think about how to make this giant leap and fucking make it big all of a sudden. Start looking at what you're really good at. Start being honest with yourself, you know, yeah. what you're not good at. You know, like, yeah. I'm not good at cleaning my room. Fucking be honest <laughs> with yourself, right? Start talking to yourself the yeah. way you would talk to your, your roommate if you weren't getting along with them. You'll start to realize that you do lack a lot of the skill sets that you are required to do that level of art form, you know, whether that's music, art, dance, whatever, right? Once you identify what you're good at, you need to be honest with yourself, and it's very important. Once you figure out what you're good at, write those things down, those characteristics of what you do. Maybe you're really good at drawing with a pencil. Maybe you're really good at podcasts. Maybe you're really good at taking videos yeah. and editing, yeah. right? Those are your limitations. Putting pen and paper. Yeah. yeah, look at those limitations of what you're good at. That's what you would call your zone of competence. You're competent at that, you know? And uh, there's this really good book called Mastering Fear that talks about this process. What you want to do is look at your zone of competence and then work toward away from that slowly. You don't want to leave, you don't want to leave your comfort zone. This concept of like, oh, oh just mix yeah. it up, just leave yeah, your comfort yeah. zone, bro. When you come back, you'll be fucking new and enlightened, man. <laughs> All right, maybe that does happen at times. Why don't you look at what you're really fucking good at? Go to the outer fucking edge where that cliff just fucking drops because you don't want no shit and yeah. that's just a new yeah. valley and look at that cliff and look how to grow a bridge from what you know towards something else so quite the metaphor if you're very good at drawing and you want to do i don't know like maybe you want to do film concept art then look at what you're really good at drawing so maybe you're really good Start at drawing people yeah. and draw fucking characters yeah. for films right? yeah. Yeah. and then work into anything else right but if you strategize it that way what you're going to do is you're going to set up all these breadcrumbs of of, of successes because you're going to do shit Which you is do. what essentially you did to ultimately get to somewhere. So it, yes. it, it takes time. I mean, yes. the, the, there's no industry unless you're a fucking prodigy where you come in and you, you hit it out the park first try. You're going you're gonna to need to do projects. You're going to need to get better. You're going to need to know what your strengths and weaknesses are. Yeah. And you got to work on yourself. And in time, I promise you, if you just keep doing the shit eventually you'll see the fruit at the well, end of I mean, the fucking I mean, tree like we were you, talking about well, from the beginning. Well, you gotta, be, you gotta be really honest about it, though, because most ground. of the people listening will not make it. Correct. You've got to Correct. look at the world the way it but you actually gotta try. is. But you gotta try. Everybody's gotta Every- try. Because if everybody's trying, that's what is gonna produce more creatives. This is the way I look at it. I'm very realistic, yet at the same time inspirational. <laughs> Damn, that's deep. <laughs> most of you will not make it. Most of you can't make it. It's, there's not enough room for you guys. But for the ones that are listening, that fucking need it, that need to fucking eat, that need to fucking sleep and not worry about fucking crime yeah. or, 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 or yeah. anything outside, that need to fucking survive so fucking bad that you don't have a choice, you guys will be fine. Right. And for the individuals that have everything, don't waste those opportunities, right? Don't waste the opportunities that are in front of you. But just know there's somebody much hungrier than you working mm. much harder every Always single will be. day. And, and it's only a matter of time before you get taken over by some international alternative. 
cheaper international alternative for many Usually, jobs yeah. for many for many, many jobs, jobs. Yeah. and eventually some form of ai depending on your line of work right, right. and so you know I- I- if you think about it it's sort of like when you go on you know doordash or yelp right you're like looking for thai food you're like well i'm gonna look for a good rating and then i'm gonna read what people said and i'm gonna look at the photos so there's all these like requirements people looking at you the same way yeah you know there's no rating on you but your resume and your look and your work and so they're always judging you and hi- you're gonna have to navigate how to l- stick out from the crowd at the same time be at the same level as a professional so you've got to be different and you've also got to be really good love it man i love the way you think dude good look i, I just you're you're literally like everything you're explaining of what you think people can get to you've lived through right so you you've gotten yourself through maybe no support I'm still early going on. through it of course <laughs> you are and you're always going to be going through it so yeah, 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 yeah. like well, i'm excited to, to to see the stuff you got coming up i know there's a lot of stuff you probably can't talk about but i appreciate you coming on man I, this yeah, is man, always nice fucking talking to you dude so anytime dude. anything we miss anything you want to touch on anyone you want to shout out uh i've been doing shout outs i don't know is that a thing do people do, <laughs> do people like that when i ask them i mean if that? you if you guys are interested in art education because I, I know a lot of the people that listen to podcasts are really curious about uh, creatives in the field um, know that because of coronavirus and everything going online that as an artist this is a blessing there's art education online you don't have to go to brainstorm look up art schools online when you go to those art schools when you're looking at an instructor or class look up that person's work look up that instructor's uh, uh, track record where have they worked what have they done that's all they have to offer if they haven't done mm. much they might have some novel knowledge about fun fundamentals and no, uh, but no actual real life experience. No life experience. Right. So they might not teach you how to t- play the scales or draw, you know, the the foundations. But they don't have any experience li- living and breathing as an artist. You must pursue education where you can also learn how to live as an artist, not just be an artist. Because living as an artist is fucking miserable, <laughs> right? <laughs> because, you know, it, it, you do a piece of art and then you look at it, you're like, fuck, I'm shit, fuck, it's shit, you know? Like, yeah, and you're like yeah. I should fucking give up, right? And th- th- that this is, uh, this is part of, you know, welcome. Right? This is part of being in, the, being in the artist club. What's at the core of it at the end of the day, the only thing that keeps me going, and maybe it's what will keep you going too, uh, is that every decision I make is my own. I will not do something for somebody else. In the beginning, I did because I didn't have a choice. I needed to eat. Yeah. But now I'm at a place where um, I'm really careful and picky about those decisions. And that's a place where you want to be no matter how much money you make. Because that gives you a sense of control of your life and a sense of empowerment. And it's not really about, you know, becoming a rich artist. Uh, I would say feeling wealthy as an artist is doing what work you want to do. And that's really where you feel rich. And so... Uh, just pursue what makes you happy. Pursue what pumps you up. Pursue what uh, gets you motivated in the morning. And, and if somebody doesn't think that's cool, well, fucking stop talking to them. Yes, sir. Or, or ask them why it's not cool and take notes. Because maybe that's they have more constructive. Way. Because then there's something they can teach right, you. Right. So I like that, well, man. You're te- nonstop teaching. <laughs> you're just schooling everyone. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming out, man. Yeah, Thank man, you for the course. time. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you.